Dean Kirkland has quickly become a highly accomplished commercial television and film director by combining his keen visual eye to unusual and powerful subject matter. His unique style and sophisticated approach have allowed him to transition from A-list photographer to well-respected filmmaker with an esteemed client list that includes The Home Depot, Lamborghini, Antonio Tetro, Clint Eastwood, and Martin Sheen. Dean is recognized for his innovative and unique style of automotive photography and is regarded by many high-profile collectors throughout the nation. In 2012, he combined his talents with the knowledge and racing experience possessed by his production partner, Le Mans winning driver, Rick Noop, and the two men established K&K Productions. Their first collaborative project is a beautifully engaging look into the Pebble Beach Road Races from 1950 through 1956 titled Racing Through the Forest, which has been scheduled for autumn 2016 release. Illustrating these wonderful stories through documentaries allowed Dean to photograph, interview, film some of the world's greatest cars and drivers. Dean is currently developing several documentaries, which include Parnelli Jones, Bobby and Al Unser, Mario Dreddy, and Sir Sterling Moss. The ability to continue capturing and preserving this valuable automotive history in his unique style and aesthetic vision is the goal of K&K Productions and the living dream of Dean Kirkland. Welcome, Dean Kirkland. Yeah, how you doing? doing great. Uh, the very first screening of Racing Through the Forest was held in conjunction with the Concours de Elegance at Pebble Beach on August 13th, 2014 at, Spanish, at the Inn at Spanish Bay. When did you first meet Rick and become involved with and accumulate the materials from which to draw the story that was now become Racing Through the Forest? Well, I actually met Rick uh, through another friend of mine that I was uh, developing a television show with. And it was a racing show. Um, this guy had hired Rick as a, a hired fish car driver for his car. Uh, became friends with Rick in uh, about 2011. And um, uh, sometime in, in, um, in uh, late 2011, he contacted me and asked me if I would come out to Carmel to do a video diary tribute for his dad, who was about to die. He had multiple forms of cancer, and he wanted to do a, like a family tribute uh, video diary. That's Frosty and Noop, up, right? Frosty Noop. That was Fred. That was Fred Frosty Noop, yes, sir. Okay. And uh, he he had had been a racer, and and they both raced, and uh, he was the first uh, historic at uh, in Seca, and uh, you know he had went with Rick when Rick raced. And, and the law, and, and he'd always been a, you know, a big supporter of Rick. And so when we went out there, uh, Rossi started telling me these stories about him racing in Pebble Beach, and, and it sounded really interesting. I'd never heard about it. But I went home and started putting this uh, mini documentary together for the, the new family. But I couldn't find anything really online about the Pebble Beach Road races or anything like that. Didn't know anything about it, and through through digging through uh, websites here and there, and, and seeing names here and there, I started putting together a couple little things, and and I put it up online so that Frosty could see it, and I named it the Fred New at uh, Talk About Pebble Beach, and somehow Pebble Beach found us on YouTube. They started doing some research on us, con contacted me, and asked me what we were doing. <laughs> <laughs> we were kind of surprised, and uh, they, they said, we really like where you're going with this, and can can you finish it? So I, I contacted Rick, and we, you know, we went and had a meeting with Pebble Beach, and, and they really liked what, the direction we were going with it. So we started a full effort in trying to find uh, more drivers and race cars and footage and photos which at the time there was really nothing uh, around other than what uh, a few photos that Pebble Beach had. And uh, a few, a few places online kind of 
even mention about what we were trying to do. And slowly but surely, people started coming out of the woodwork, and it started snowballing after that. And it 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 was amazing. You know, people would call me up and they would say, "Hey, my dad raced, or my my grandpa raced, or uh, I raced." You know, there was a couple of guys that called me up and said, "I was part of the Humble Beach Road Race," and it was wonderful. And uh, through a, a group in LA called the Fabulous Fifties, there was a guy named Bill Pollock, and he he was uh, the winner of 1951 and 52, and went and met with them, and you know, uh, it, it just started kind of so long after that. There was one person would give me a number that would lead to two more numbers, that would lead to four more numbers, and before you knew it, we had enough footage that. that it's it, it from 1953-1956. Rick himself uh, had a little bit of footage from 1957 at Laguna Seca, which was the first year of Laguna Seca, and they still call it the eighth annual uh, Pebble Beach Road Races at Laguna Seca. So that's that's kind of how it how it all started snowballing. It was just through people uh, that were enthusiasts that heard about us and that wanted to help us. Yeah, put the thing together. So you're able to get all of the materials and everything through a pretty much word of mouth, and then everybody had their own archives and everything. It was. You know, there was one uh, investigator that uh, he was uh, he was a, a private investigator in Pebble Beach that knew of a lady who was a son or who was a daughter of a race car driver. She apparently had probably five years of footage. And uh, after about a year of searching for her, we finally got a hold of her, and she was so excited to hear that we were doing this that she gave us the footage, and it was amazing to see all of the stuff that was on there. There was a, a couple of other people that had nice 16-millimeter um, film that they had shot at the races, and uh, I think there was a radio, a, a TV station, after we had started doing this, that went to Pebble Beach, and they had a DVD with about, I would say probably 30 minutes, 20 to 30 minutes of footage on there from, I believe it was 1956, uh, at the road race was 1956. So we got that from them, and that was after we had already started this. So I think, I think us, Starting this uh, journey and, and looking for all the photos and footage, it kind of shook up a little bit of the internet and people, and it started uh, people looking at it and thinking about it. And when, like I said, when we first started this, when I went online and typed it and Google, and we would Google Pebble Beach Road Races. Nothing would come up. There was probably one or two photos that came up. But now, since we've been doing so much work, if you go on now and, and Google Pebble Beach Road Races, a whole list of stuff comes up. <laughs> and it, the Pebble Beach was so elated that we had taken on this uh, <laughs> this mountain of work to help their archives. And now their archives has, uh, has flourished because of our efforts in, in finding these guys that were part of the road races, the families, um, cars that, that had been lost, um, it, it, you know, it's been a great thing. After this first screening, what were the impressions that you received? Well, you know, uh, there, there wasn't a whole lot of uh, dry eyes in the house. When we first showed this, there was a lot of people there who were really connected with Pebble Beach. And they just, I mean, we had an overwhelming uh, response to it. And people were... Um, you know, coming up to us afterwards, just going, "Oh my God, this is, you know, we are so happy that you did this. It's about time." Um, you know, family members that had raced in this that had been forgotten, you know, by other people. And now they're and now they're immortalized on on film with this movie. Um, it, it's been great. You know, all, all the people that have come up to us and the emails and and uh, everything. It's, it's been great. I know that in around 2015, an interest was expressed to uh, prepare the documentary for a broadcast over public television. How did this shape the documentary? Well, there was, there was a, a, a 
CBS company in San Diego that expressed interest in not really showing the movie in its entirety, but using it as part of their uh, pledge week uh, for PBS. And we, we got a great response from that. We, we went down uh, with Bill Pollock, who was, like I said, he was the 1961, 62 winner. He came down with us. Um, we brought in a couple of cars that didn't race there, but they were the same cars that, that the type of cars that had raced there. There was a Jaguar and an MG that, uh, the same style of cars that had raced Cold Beach. And so, um, it, that was, that was nice here then. To know that there were people down in even San Diego, which uh, down there was Tory Pines this time. And, um, they, uh, they loved it. Uh, when did this version air, and uh, uh, what were the uh, post-airing impressions that you received? Was it Bill? Uh, this I can't remember. Was this? Um, hmm, I, I seem to forget <laughs> when we when we showed this. I think this was. Um, gosh. Because my understanding is it might have been November, December last year. Yeah, yeah, I think it was yeah, it was, it was the end, the end of last year, somewhere out there. Um, like I said, we got a lot of emails from people that saw the you know just a few minutes on TV. They they called us up. You know, where, where can we get the where, you know, when, when can we buy it? Where can we see the, the movie in its entirety? And so, uh, you know, we're still looking for distribution at the moment. So as soon as we um, make a deal with the distributor, then hopefully we can get this on television and they'll be, uh, you know, we'll be able to, to provide this to other parts of the world that will introduce them to why there is uh, a Concord Elegance in Pebble Beach and why is that we can affect you with this today. I understand this latest version of Racing Through the Forest, uh, which is in its fourth uh, edit or final revision, are you um, you are uh, fresh off a pre-release screening um, at Racing Through the Forest at the Automoto Film Festival held in Detroit, May 12th through 14th in 2016. Can you tell us a little bit about this, how the screening came about and your impressions uh, as to the size and attendance and the makeup of the crowd at the screening? Well, uh, I had run across a gentleman uh, by the name of uh, Herbert Lobianco. And he has a company um, that was a aftermarket uh, aftermarket um, automotive. Uh, you know, they, they sell like T-shirts and and car parts and movies and signs and stuff like that. And they uh, they knew about us. Uh, they had a the first first automotive film festival was in Pebble Beach uh, in 2014, the same week that we were. Uh, doing the, the first viewing for Pebble Beach. So we couldn't be part of their film festival because of our contract with Pebble Beach, but uh, talking with them and staying friends with them, they had another screening this year at, um, in Detroit. So I talked to Fred, he told me I wanted to know if we would put our film in the festival with the forest. So that I, I think was, was one of the biggest draws for the film festival in Detroit, and we were kind of surprised about that ourselves. Wow! Uh, a number of people came to the uh, the opening party. Um, we talked with them and, and uh, had a great response from that. They were very excited to see the film. And uh, the final night of the film festival, which was 14th, uh, we had the largest turnout of any of the movies that were there. Uh, looks like a lot of people said they were only coming to the film festival to see our film, <laughs> which was great. We, you know, we wanted them to see all the films, but uh, it was it was nice to you know that they were coming uh, you know, to see our film. And you know, afterwards, it was the same thing. It was, it was, I did a Q and A afterwards, and people we were just astonished of all of the the, the interviews that we had that we had, uh, we had done, the footage that we had acquired, the photos that we had acquired. It was, you know, they were just really astonished that we were able to pull this off. But you know, at the time, you know, after, you know, over three years of, of working on this, <laughs> we were thinking, you know, every day, you know, where, where, where can we get more? Where can we get more? You know, we just wanted to keep, keep digging in. And, and if we didn't, you know, put the brakes on when we did, uh, you know, we would have probably still been 
you know, acquiring footage now and <laughs> looking for more interviews. Every filmmaker is confronted with the issues of distribution and broadcast content access. Where is K&K Productions on this arc of awareness and access to motor culture and documentary consuming public? Well, at the moment, uh, it, you know, any, any documentary filmmaker will tell you that it's, it's just not easy getting it out there, no matter how, uh, how the footage is, how the, the documentary is. You know, it can be you know, the greatest documentary in the world, but they're so hard to get, um, to, to get distributed. Um, it's, I, I, I haven't found the magic combination yet of, of the right person. Uh, you know, we've, we've met with lots of people that say, oh, you know, this is the greatest film, we can get it out there, and, uh, haven't, haven't hit that magic number yet. But I think that, you know, we've got a few more calls and a few more distribution, distribution companies, uh, international and domestic. And I think, we may be pretty close to making a deal. Um, you know, this is this isn't really anything that we, we see going to the big screen. I think you know we could might do a few more film festivals here and there to, just to get it on to, uh, to onto a screen, so, which is really nice to, to be sitting in an audience and, and watching the movie. But I, I think this is something that's going to be more for television. Um, we'd love to see it on something like Discovery, Velocity, or. Uh, NBC Sports or CBS Sports Network, you know, one of those channels to uh, to broadcast to the people who really appreciate automotive and racing, and you know that's who we want to get it to. But you know uh, the, the the people that we've shown this to, not necessarily being uh, a car person. There's a lot of people that were in the audience that weren't necessarily car people, but that still enjoyed it. You know, it, it talked to people who were 18 to 80 and uh, you know, housewives to race car drivers. So I think we had all of the all the demographics with this without trying to be too technical or too racy or, you know, something that would keep the interest of a lot of people. Well, for those who um, really appreciate a good motor culture story or, or a documentary that's well-crafted and put together, um, where can they might be able to see this as a future pre-release screening uh, for 2016 uh, before it's scheduled autumn release once uh, you're able to secure that type of distribution? Hmm. Well, um, that's a good question. I, I wish I knew. Uh, you know, we, we've got uh, a submission then to a few more film festivals. I think we may be part of another automotive film festival if, if that comes about here pretty soon. Um, it's it, it, it's still up in the air. You know, just uh, I think if, if people want to stay in touch with us through our Facebook page or, um, yeah, I think that's, that's probably the best way to do it is our Facebook page or through our website, um, racingthroughtheforestmovie.com. Uh, you can just search us on Facebook, uh, Racing Through the Forest, and um, just kind of stay, stay in touch with them that way. But like I said, right now, there's no no ink to paper yet on any contract with distribution, so we're still still in the process. Well, Dean, um, it's been a, a pleasure catching up with you and finding out more about Racing Through the Forest and, uh, of course, its latest screening there in Detroit. And um, I want to thank you for your time today. Hey, I, I, I do appreciate it, Evan, and you know, whatever we can do, and, and hopefully this will get the word out about uh, Racing Through the Forest and, and get us some more... Uh, Thanks again. All right, and fuck your ass.